Two years ago, I posted a video about how I had bought and sold used mountain bikes to make some extra money, eventually making enough to pay for a brand new bike. It was mostly about how much I had paid, how long I kept them, and the profit made on each. Back then, I was just excited to share the story, but I've had a lot of comments wondering how exactly I found the deals that I did. In this video, I'm going to share a few tips on how to get a great deal on a used bike that you can ride for years or simply flip for a profit. In mid-2018, I found myself getting really into biking. I mean, I had mountain biked to some extent since I was a teenager, but around this time is when the bug really bit me. Back then, I had a Trek X01 cyclocross bike that I used for commuting, and a 2016 Salsa Muckluck fat bike on mountain bike duty. I was wanting to get more into gravel riding on the steep forest roads nearby, but wasn't too happy with the gearing on the X01. So off I went on the hunt for an inexpensive used gravel bike that would fit my needs. 12 months later, my quest to buy one bike turned into more than 20. And 12 months after that, another 19. Basically, what happened is that I found a really good deal on a Scott Speedster Gravel and thought it would work for what I wanted. After a few rides, I decided it was too small for me, so I put it back up for sale at a higher, but still fair price, and it sold in two days. That was pretty cool, but I still needed a gravel bike, so I kept looking at the classifieds all day every day. One day, I saw an all carbon fat bike with really nice components pop up for a thousand bucks. It had only been listed for a couple minutes, but I called the guy and arranged to check it out after work. Even though it was basically a no-name brand, it was in good shape and seemed to be a good deal, so I bought it. Again, this bike didn't really fit me, it was a medium and I ride a large, and it wasn't really what I was looking for, but I thought maybe I'd have the same luck I had with the Speedster. I gave it a super basic tune-up, adjusting the shifters, aligning the brakes, and adjusting the air pressure, and put it back up for $1,800. It sold in a little over a week, and I realized I was on to something. I started keeping a close eye on the classifieds, and anytime I found something that seemed like a good deal, I'd jump on it. Most of the time, I'd end up making a small profit of one to 200 bucks, other times I'd double my money, and then sometimes I'd lose a little. But in general, more money was coming in than going out. It's been a few years since then, and now I live in a more rural area, so I don't really flip bikes anymore but I thought I'd give some tips on how to find good deals that you can flip for a profit or ride for years. So let's start off with the buying side of things. Number one, know what you're looking for. If you're hoping to get a good deal, you should probably know what you're looking at. The easiest thing to start with would be brands that are putting out quality bikes. Even non-bikers will recognize brands like Specialized, Trek, Cannondale, or Giant but there are also lesser known brands that are huge in the biking world that the layman might not know about. Think Canyon, Ibis, Salsa, Nuke Proof, brands like that. Bikes from these brands carry more value off the bat just because of the name on them. After that, you should learn about components, especially when it comes to suspension, drivetrain, and brakes. These are what most buyers are paying attention to because they're the most noticeable when it comes to how a bike performs. Shimano, SRAM, Fox, RockShox, Magura, Hope Tech, MRP, among many others are all names you should be familiar with. There's a lot more to components too because each brand makes everything from entry level to ultra high end, so learn where each model falls along that spectrum. Sure, a 12-speed Shimano drivetrain is a 12-speed, but it's going to demand a much lower price than, say, the XTR version. At the same time though, a 12-speed Dior is a heck of a lot nicer than an XTR drivetrain from 2006, and not just from a wear and tear perspective either. Each new iteration of these models brings new technology to perform better, so keep the age of these items in mind as well. Number two, familiarize yourself with market prices. Now that you're an expert on bike components and brands, it's good to know what the going rate for these things are. I found that a good place to start is with how much something is brand new. That's typically going to be the most you'd pay for something, so why not start there? I'm gonna pretend this is happening in a market where there isn't some crazy shortage because I know availability is short right now and things are actually going for over MSRP in some cases. But even if something isn't available brand new, I like to search around online and see what similarly spec bikes are going for. You might not be able to find the exact model or build, but if the frame is the same material and the components are pretty similar, it's still a pretty good indicator on the price. It might actually even be in your favor if there aren't many for sale especially if that bike's been discontinued. This was the case with a Niner Ross 9 Plus I bought used. 
Niner had discontinued this 29 plus wheeled beast a year or so prior, and bikes in that tire size were becoming increasingly hard to find. I picked it up for 800 bucks, after some negotiating of course, and rode that thing a ton before selling it. At that point I had converted it to single speed, but still sold it for 900 without the drivetrain because you just can't find many bikes like that out there. One important detail here is to pay attention to how long something has been on the market. If it's been on there for 4 weeks and is still available, either the price is too high or there's something really wrong with the bike. That's not always the case, but it usually is. Number 3. Constantly watch the classifieds. When I say constantly, I mean it. If you're going more than a couple hours between checking, there's a good chance you're going to miss some deals. Every single one of my best deals has been a case where I saw the ad less than an hour after posting and had already reached out to a range of time to go pick the bike up. In some cases, it was within a few minutes. I once got two framed Wolftrax carbons as a package deal for 1500 bucks. When I saw the ad, I think it had been up for maybe four minutes. And while framed isn't a well-known brand or anything, I knew based on the carbon frames and the components that this was going to be an epic deal. I decided to call instead of texting them so they knew I was serious and I wouldn't get lost in the inevitable flood of text messages. A couple hours later, I was home with both bikes plus a bike rack and a brand new Camelback, all for $1,500. You might think you're the only one out there looking for a good deal, but that's far from the truth, so speed is the name of the game. Another note here is that I rarely check pink bike or other bike specific classifieds for deals. Good deals rarely come up there, so I stick with things like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace instead. Number 4. Learn to Haggle 95% of the time, I don't offer the price listed on the ad. Sellers in a used market are usually not only willing, but actually expecting to get an offer under asking price. I'm not saying to lowball them, because as someone who sells a lot of used bikes and components, there's nothing more frustrating, but don't be afraid to make a reasonable offer. If it's up for $600, offer $5. If it's up for $2,500, offer $22. The worst they can say is no, the best they can say is yes, and most likely you'll just meet somewhere in the middle. If you're offering less though, come up with a reason or two why. It could be the bike's in worse condition than you thought, it might need a tune-up or a wheel trude, or maybe you think that's just a more fair price. If you've really done your research, know the market and the components and bike you're looking at, it'll be pretty easy to find some flaws or reasons why you want to offer less. Be respectful though, and if they say no, say thanks for their time, wish them good luck with the sale, it's their bike after all, so whether or not they sell it is up to them. I've actually had a few times where I've made offers on bikes that seemed way overpriced. I'm talking 2000 for a bike that's maybe worth 800 Usually, it turns out that the person selling the bike doesn't know much about it or has some incorrect information like the year it was made. So when making the offer, I usually explain why I'm offering so low compared to asking and send a link to the bike from the brand's bike archives. That might sound condescending or rude, but I've only ever had people thank me for explaining it to them and often ask for advice on what I think a fair price would be. Now let's move on to the selling side of things. I don't have as much to say here because it's pretty simple and doesn't require much research or time on your end as the seller. Number one, tune it up. This is where you do need some additional bike mechanic skills, but not a lot. Nobody wants to buy a bike that isn't braking or shifting well or with a wheel out of true. The first thing I do when getting a bike ready for sale is give it a basic tune-up. I make sure the drivetrain is shifting well, the brakes are working and aligned, the tires are aired up, and things are lubricated and ready to go. This often doesn't require putting any money into the bike except for the occasional new brake pads or tire sealant refresh or maybe a brake bleed, but those are the exception. If the bike is in need of major maintenance like a new hub or shock rebuild, I probably didn't buy it in the first place uh, unless I could get it for a really good deal. Number two, make it look good. Don't sell a dirty bike. Washing a bike doesn't take a lot of time, but it makes a huge difference in both the way a bike looks and how it performs. It doesn't take anything special either. I usually just use a hose and a couple rags unless things are super dirty and then soap gets involved. Get it wet, wipe it down, rinse it off, dry things off. Then move on to the tune-up phase. Be sure to let it dry before taking pictures, and when you do get to that phase, set the bike up and take pictures from multiple angles, and then move in and focus on specific components. You may also want to take pictures of any major issues there are, or big old scratches or dents. 
I'll usually put one of the bike from each side, one at an angle, and then the pictures of the tires, derailleur, suspension components, and the handlebars. I rarely get asked for additional pictures after that. Number three, write a detailed ad. This is an important part that's often overlooked. You don't need to write a big essay or some salesy description, but try to give the info you'd want to know. Make, model, year, and size are the most important, so put those in the title. Then in the description, talk about the condition of the bike and components, list the specs like the fork, brake, drivetrain, and any upgrades you may have done. I also list any issues it might have, even if it's something that will need to happen soon like a fork service. Be a good seller by being transparent with any issues it might have. You don't need to list every scratch in the paint, but be upfront about anything that actually might impact a buyer's decision. Number four, price it fairly. If you go into this process thinking you're going to double your money every time, you're gonna be really disappointed. Like I said earlier, I found I'm usually only making a few hundred bucks in profit. I use a Google Doc to track all of my bike flips and my average profit is right around 200 bucks. And that includes some major outliers like my ice cream truck that I made over 1500 bucks on. If you're making one to 200 on a flip, I think that's great assuming you didn't spend 10 hours of your time in the process. But since I got the bike under market value, I typically list it right at the average of similar bikes I've seen. It ends up being a fair price for the buyer, especially considering it just got a full tune-up and it tends to sell relatively quickly. I guess if you only cared about getting the most out of it as you possibly can, you can list it higher, but you may be holding on to that bike for quite a while. Number five, be willing to negotiate. Just like you negotiated with the original seller of the bike, don't be rude or act outraged if someone makes an offer under your asking price. Except for lowballs, I guess you can have your fun with them because it's so frustrating. As much as I love making money, I also love talking about bikes with people and many of the bikes I've sold have gone to people just getting into the sport. I'd rather someone buy a bike and join the community than argue over $50. And that's pretty much it. There's probably other advice I could give on the topic, but this is really the best and most comprehensive advice I could give to someone looking to get a good deal on a bike or start flipping bikes on the side. It's a fun process, you learn a lot, you get to ride and work on a lot of cool bikes, all while making a little bit of money at the same time. Even though I rarely buy bikes to immediately turn around and sell these days, I found I still get a thrill out of watching the classifieds for something good to pop up. If you have any other questions, uh, maybe something I didn't answer in this video, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to answer it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.